That's good. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, going live on uh, Discord and YouTube, and everybody's coming in. I'm in the middle of changing brokerages. Okay, good. We'll be ready to trade and join you later next week. Very good. How are you, Jay? How are you, Jay? All right, good to see you, Keith. Man, Keith, wow, you missed a really amazing uh, portion of the day today. I think you were in and out, right? Oh, my God. AACG, uh, I believe it was. 254%. And I think you would have got some of that. I don't know. Depends on if you're going for it yet. Oh, man. If I learned anything from, uh, what was today, Thursday? If I learned anything from Wednesday, it was to stay put and do and be here all day um, Thursday. Because Wednesday at the last two hours, we were able to find things that broke out, you know, by just watching them all day. We just sort of sensing and watching all the momentum stocks all day long. Um, and then we just repeated that today and my God. <clears throat> and it wasn't like we were jabbing in the dark and gambling and like, oh, ooh, we got lucky. I mean, no, we had like 20 stocks up and there was nothing happening. There was just one stock that gave us a trigger. I mean, we had the strategies are sound, you know, and there was just one truck, one stock giving the trigger and poof, it just kept going. Uh, you got to check the replay in um, in uh, live trading archives at four hours. Let me see. I even have it up. Four hours, 22 minutes, and 25 seconds. You know, I'm going to give you guys the link. Everybody who is in here tonight, you to start watching this from this point in the YouTube. Insane. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, we'll get into that probably right after we do a little market analysis. So today was outstanding. Today was, I couldn't ask for a better day. Uh, and uh, really, it um, got more and more outstanding as the day went on. And the VIX was dropping and dropping. But yeah, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at it. There she blows. So uh, uh, we are in a pretty safe spot now. Uh, we could definitely pull back, but um, we have just broken out of the market uh, top, all time highs. And we have this other little support area, 381. Wouldn't bother me one bit if we started to pull back. Things got worse for two more days because I know that this is a signal. You know, that we're, we're, we're extending into the new stratosphere now and into the new level. And uh, so I really think that, you know, even if tomorrow goes uh, down, uh, I'll still be uh, trusting the market a lot more now. And we'll be ready to put on swing trades probably next week. I don't think we should do any over the weekend. Let's, let's, check, let's check and see how Monday turns out. So uh, tomorrow, um, probably we won't do swing trades, uh, but we will put some on Monday. And by the way, that reminds me, we uh, took profits on Twitter today. So we'll take a look at that as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, outside of that, if it doesn't go down, <laughs> then that's great. Uh, one thing it could do is it could go inside, inside of the body. And, uh, and that wouldn't really change any of today's direction. So long as it stays above, the prior day's close, 382, then it doesn't entirely erase that day. Just logging in. Anything you missed? <laughs> no. On AMC, no. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think that looks really good. We're, we have a very good outlook on the market right now. Uh, it's not tricky. It's nice and smooth. And uh, let's take a look at the VIX. And you can see that uh, we even got into the 21s today. Amazing. 
I feel like that guy on that TikTok, you know, when they're talking about the Apple uh, iPhone. And you know it costs $1,200. Amazing. <laughs> oh, yes, but, it, you know, the battery is non-replaceable. I want it. <laughs> So the VIX, the VIX, is the Market Uncertainty Index, and it dropped all the way down to 21.77 today. I mean, that is just a hell of a recovery. Loving it. It's amazing. Uh, and when it drops below uh, and gets into the 20s, and if it were to drop below 20, that would be pretty uh, precedent setting. Only did that for a moment on one day, uh, this entire economic depression, however you want to call it. Um, it hasn't been down at this level, down below 20, but for a moment on November 27th. And now you can actually kind of see that potentially coming uh, and then be a new era ahead. The teens, VIX in the teens, that'll be fantastic. It'll be amazing. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's look at Twitter. We had a swing trade on on that. Uh, I wish I had my uh, band set up on this, but uh, I don't. Okay. Uh, so let me see if I can draw this channel here. What we were looking for on Twitter was to get in right around here, and that's where we got in 47-ish. Uh, and then it pulled back for a day or two or three or four and really tested our faith. <clears throat> but every time it was really going with the market. So it was really just a lowering of the tide. It wasn't Twitter's fault per se. Okay, the stock's fault per se. So you had to discount the drop um, for that. And that's why, you know, putting in like actual stop orders does not work as a system. You would have gotten stopped out on that. But we knew to held to hold and keep it going. And uh and we, we now hit the first profit target on that, which was 56, because that's up in the top end of the range of this channel on the inside end of the range. So like right along there, 56 was the uh, previous high. And now this is a, a breakout to the new all time high, a good time to take off some of your position. So we had this swing trade on for, for about three weeks now. And, um, those who had multiple contracts took off half. And now we uh, are looking and hoping to see if it will continue to about 61, 60, 61, 62, right up into this range. So good job on Twitter. Somebody, Jerry says, I sold Twitter way before. Yeah, but uh, you probably didn't have the right option anyway, Jerry. And so that's all right. Uh, well, yeah, you'll do perfect next time. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, today, uh, we did a day trade, a ton of momentum stocks. Um, I think we had 18 or 20 or 22 stocks we went through and we were trading or watching, waiting for triggers and setups to occur. Uh, but, uh, then the first one was CYTH. I think that was the first real big winner. And then, um, CPSH and finally AACG. And let's take a look at them. So CYTH, let's pull that up. Oh, that uh, Twitter option paid uh, one person 155%. So that was pretty damn good. That's pretty typical for our swing trades. Uh, we did 324% on one of them, 111%, 125% on the ARCs. Um, sometimes we'll get just 55%, 60, 70, 80%, uh, but 150%. Yeah, I mean, these are, you know, it's a swing trade, so it really gets to build up a lot of appreciation in price. Yeah, I hope you get the next one, Kelly. All right, so if you take a look at the uh, pre-market chart on CYTH, when I was looking at it, is this the five minute? That's the one minute chart. When I was looking at it, I said that it was a bit thin on volume, but it was a nice jump from the previous uh, close of the previous day and that uh, it did hold decently, a little bit rough, and I was hoping to see what would happen. 
So when the market opened, what we're looking for there is a break of the pre-market high. So that was a 10 point, uh, 15, somewhere around there. <clears throat> and I'm going to zoom up a little bit so we can see these trades a little better. All right. So we took CYTH right here when it broke that pre-market high right there first minute it was in the very first minute and uh we did a 20 cent uh, ladder on that so every 20 cents we were taken out and then all in on the round numbers so we'll get right back in right here and uh this was an all in as well so that means your entire account into the stock shares and again, every 20 cents. And then at 12, back all in again. So these are the all in points right here. And it was not without its moments of pullback and occasional all outs near the tops of these ranges just before getting back all in again and topping out. <clears throat> but that's to be expected, and that's all right. And right there, I believe we got halted. Yes, I don't remember if anyone got stuck in the halt. I think some people may have got stuck in the halt there. And then it popped way up. And the plan was to sell as soon as the halt opened, if it was falling or if it was going way up, because <laughs> then we would just get right back in on whatever it would be breaking. So we did uh, th basically 13.2 on that one from 10.2. So that's, let's pull up the calculator. Where is it? Am I not seeing it somewhere here? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I was not seeing it. Uh, and I see why, because I have the drawing tools on. 13.2 <clears throat> divided by 10.2. That was a 29.4% uh, return. 29.4% in the first, basically, 10 minutes of the market. And understand that's all in, meaning with your entire account. So your entire account just grew 29.8%. So if you had $10,000, you now have 3000 more. So we had a couple of people uh, post their gains in the testimonial sections on that. You can go take a look at it. Yeah, AACG was outstanding today. We're going to go over that in just a second. So uh, there was one more break, I think, on CYTH that we took. Let's take a look at it. Clear. And uh, you can go ahead and watch the uh, entire trading day today back uh, if you're a member of our group. So at that point, we waited all day for a break of 13.34, uh, right in there. And we took that trade again a couple times at the top, refilling and taking out every time, getting back in on rebreaks all the way up to around 15. So 15 divided by, oh, hold on. 15 divided by that 13.35. Uh, that was another 12% uh, gain on your entire account. I mean, as a day trader, if you can get 0.5% to 4% per day, uh, that's excellent. Today was just outstanding. <clears throat> outstanding. After that uh, came CPSH. Uh, after that initial morning trade, I believe the next knockout trade was CPSH. Let's take a look. So what we were looking for on CPSH was exactly that, the break of 21.7. Um, actually, that did come right after CYTH.
And I uh, recall it was just an incredible rush, 21-7 all the way to uh, 29.5 and then pulling back with the all out. Um, multiple entries at round numbers and taking off every 20 cents. Uh, so that was forty percent gain, <laughs> and that was an all in. That was an all in. So your account, if you have ten thousand dollar account, that's four thousand dollars. And the thing is, these are compounding. So long as they don't happen at the same time, that one roughly didn't. It was about halfway into it. Uh, but so if later in the day you make 40%, but earlier in the day you made, um, I forget what that last number we made was, what was it? 28%? Yeah, 29%. Then you actually make 40% on 129%. So you're not making 40% more and 29. You're not making 69%. You're making, let's do the math on that. 1.29 times 1.4, 1.81. So you're actually getting 81% return on those two trades. Even though the first one was just 29% and the second one was 40%, you compound them because we're putting the entire account in when we make these day trades. <clears throat> uh, what do you look for when you trade options? Uh, yeah, when we also traded, so let me get over to AA, AACG though. To finish this up. So I had heard uh, that AACG, um, and it came up on my scanner uh, about it uh, sort of midday. So unfortunately, we missed the, all this opening action, um, but it looked quite choppy anyway. Had I noticed it pre market and, and went with it, uh, we would have taken it at this break of 4.25. However, when I got to it, what I had to do is I had to wait for it to break that um, daily high right there of 5.7. And that's where we went in and uh, it was just an unbelievable ride. <laughs> uh, we got 254% gains out of that on your account on about 20 trades. Uh, Jerry was there. Who, who here tonight was there? I'm taking a look at the list here. Jerry was there. Renato was there, I believe. I think Ryan was there. Boy, I wish I wish Ryan was there. Rio, yeah. <laughs> Rio was there watching it all, you know, if not participating. And uh, yeah, we just got all these breakouts. Every time it would break that level, we just get right in and then get out. We'd be scaling out. That's the whole trick to the ladder system. Scaling out and then topping off at round numbers. And then it broke again here and we got that move, scaled out all the way up. You gotta have the right tools as uh, everyone saw today. Oh man, absolutely Ryan, I wish you were there. Where the hell were you? <laughs> and then uh, yeah, we got, we got through these levels here and you get all out right before 11 and then all in and 11.01, .01. push all the way through to 12, same deal there. And pull back then we waited for this spot right here got that waited for this spot over here and got that and that was it one two three four uh five six opportunities that um we turned into one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen uh day trades all outstanding I think we, I think we maybe broke even on one of them, and even that one, I don't, well, I don't think we broke even. We accidentally made money, <laughs> so that was just outstanding. AACG was uh, the gift that kept giving, between two hundred and fifty-four percent, Justin, two hundred and fifty-four percent, because these were all ins, so compounding. Uh huh. Yeah. So you know, if you take all the trades. They compound upon each other. You add that 254 to that 81% uh, from the morning. There, actually, it's still up. Times uh, 2.54, and you get a 
359% gains on your account today. So our day trading today was a, an account quadrupler. So if you had 25 grand, you now have a hundred grand in your account. <laughs> God damn is right. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. Uh, all right. And then another one we took in the morning, uh, I think it was PayPal, uh, but it did not uh, really perform. Once it fell below VWAP, we didn't take anything any further. Uh, I believe, how did that work out with PayPal? 270, let's see. Let me see if I can get the pre-market level here. Yeah, and I, and I really don't think it will matter, uh, Warren Buffett. <laughs> One of our members, his name is Warren Buffett, and he's just loving it, I know it. Uh, but... Uh, I don't think it'll matter tomorrow. So somebody says, I can't wait for tomorrow. Do you think it will be as green of a day as today? It really won't matter because remember when we were trading AACG for the last two and a half hours in the market and making those incredible gains, nothing, we were watching the 20 other momentum stocks of the day. None of them were triggering. You know, we were watching GME fall. We were watching everything was, nothing was triggering, triggering for us. So it's just a matter of having them all up, understanding the good setups, having them all up, watching, waiting, and really having the right tools. I think some of you probably saw today, you don't want to be on, um, you know, a retail brokerage where they're giving you one second to five second fills. Oh, that's not going to work. That's not going to work on these extreme momentum plays. Uh, there was maybe one or two of those, how many did we do? 15 on AACD? There was maybe one or two where a sloppy retail trading type of uh, action probably would have worked out really well. But for the most part, the other ones, you had to be a sharpshooter. You had to have really good tools. Yeah, you can do it with toss, but you can toss, think or swim, TD Ameritrade, but you've got to go into your advanced settings and turn on direct routing. And then in your order entry area, you need to choose one of the routes you can't just put best otherwise that'll make it a market it'll just it'll take time to choose it won't work uh you gotta select one of the routes so at minimum you know you want a direct access brokerage with a platform and tda uh, td ameritrade's thinkorswim is one and if you uh want people watching whatever and you haven't opened the account yet and you want to go open an account at tda thinkorswim you can get a sign up bonus if you private message me your first and last name and email address, and I can send you an invite right after this uh, class. That's what I've been doing every night. So whoever wants that uh, sign up bonus, we both get a bonus if you sign up and uh, do your deposit and get your account going. Uh, now, if you want to extend uh, TD Ameritrade to have like absolute precision tools like the sniper, the, the most highest high tech advanced weaponry in day trading, uh, that's Dash Trader, D-A-S Trader. And uh, you can sign up with Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade, to connect Dash Trader to Thinkorswim. That's new. So if any of you are with Thinkorswim and you didn't know that, uh, yeah, you can do that. Uh, but that is $175 a month uh, for the proper feed. But uh, there you can be making those. You know, the difference between retail trading day trading like retail you know momentum day trading like we did today versus um direct access like that is when when you're seeing what you're seeing and then you push the button because that is the action you want to take because of what you're seeing with direct access you're going to get it like you're going to get what you see you're going to get that moment when you know you did what you wanted to do there'll be a little slippage sometimes but it's you basically get what you see uh, and you if you see your profit target you're gonna have a half a second to a second to go ahead and take it and that's a long time like if i see this like let's say oh my gosh and here comes the price and now the price i had all that time to put the order in if i see it that's how much time i have to get out 20% or whatever ladder step it is. Now, on the flip side, with retail trading systems, when you see it, you're all it's most likely probably already a shitty feed. So it's already probably a little late. 
Um, you can have to find that out for yourself through asking people, you know, how late is Robin Hood or how late is Weeble or how late are these different ones as far as their feeds. DOS is its own feed. It doesn't use TDA's feed. It's an immensely um, high quality feed. And that's part of the 175 bucks you're paying for. Can you imagine all the money you would have made today? It would easily pay for the 175 bucks. <laughs> so in any event, there's that with retail trading systems that they're late. Then when you put your order in, they actually take a second to six seconds to fill your order. One second to six seconds. And in that time, they're actually um, buying and selling using your money at better prices and then selling it back to you at worse prices for during that split second. And they're making money off of you and fucking you. So just in case you didn't know that. <laughs> That's why you want direct access. And by the way, when you do direct access trading, you will incur fees. But, you know, you're, if you're ready to make money day trading, like we did uh, on these trades, uh, then those are the kind of systems you want in place so that you can stop being behind all the time, being late, losing, getting late entrances, getting late exits, and missing everything versus getting early entries, getting early to profit targets, hitting everything. I mean, it's, it's that much of a difference, night and day. How much are the fees? They're tiny, but they add up. They can be, they can add up to about 10% of your monthly profits. So it sounds like a lot, but not when you're compounding your, your growth the way, you know, the way you are, you really don't care. <laughs> and you don't care about the taxes either. All right, so we did PayPal, and then there was one other one. Um, eBay didn't work out. eBay uh, never triggered. We uh, Those were options trades, by the way, PayPal and eBay. The other ones were day trades uh, with stocks, shares. PayPal and eBay were with options trades because they were so high uh, of a price. Uh, not really eBay, but we still were going to, we were going to do an options trade on eBay. It didn't work out. Fell all day, was below VWAP all day, did not qualify. Um, and there was one other one, PayPal, eBay, and does anyone, apps, there we go, Ryan remembered. Apps, we got three excellent trades out of that. All, uh, well, the first trade was the uh, reversal off the bottom. I just missed it. Uh, the trade was to be 73.25 right there to grab the options. A couple of us got it, had a sharp eye out and took it all the way up to the top there uh, through using the five minute candles as the guide. So this, is a, this was a different kind of trade. This was not the ladder system. This is five minute uh, momentum trend trading with options. Uh, then uh, we waited for it to come back around and break that again. So this was kind of like a modified hybrid um, uh, momentum option trading. And then we got this run right here. Again, using the uh, five minute candle lows to keep us in the trade and be taking some profits as it started to peter out on us. And then we had one more that we took right here and we basically broke even on that. Some people actually made money. Ryan made money on that one, I believe. Ryan says he made 68% on the first trade right here. And I think he went to class or something and he missed this trade and uh, didn't even have this one. So uh, anyway, a really good day this morning, uh, all day. Um, AACG, that late bloomer was just uh, absolutely insane. Fantastic. We had something similar to that the day before. I don't remember what it was. It's in my, um, it's in my day trades here. Okay, actually I have it up. What is this from today or yesterday? No, 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 that's from yes, that's from today. But yep, yeah, that's back to back incredible days. All right, now let's do some uh, analysis of some stock, shall we? And this market is just looking great. So uh, entering potential swings um, may be a real thing right now. Now see how apps did this whole unhinged thing. That's why like for a while you gotta let it settle in um, and just be day trading apps. One sec, guys, just typing. Okay. 
All right, uh, SD, we'll start right with that. Uh, one of my favorites. Look at that gorgeous trend channel, huh? What a beauty. So SC is definitely at the top of the range right now, and I'll be waiting for it to pull back to the bottom of that channel. Yeah, I think, you know, you could start to short it up there, but it's not a good idea to play shorts on uptrending stocks, you know, because look, let me show you why. Like this is a perfect example. So let's say you shorted this here. By the time it hits the other side of the channel, that's about all you got on it. And if you didn't get like a 0.80 delta put, uh, you probably wouldn't have beat theta and time decay on that. And you probably wouldn't have made money on that move. But if you look at it from the other side and you get in here at the bottom, when it pulled back, uh, then you're up to the top over here. So that's 158 to 215 in about four weeks, in about one month, okay? Whereas this one went 168 to 158, 10 points in three weeks. Uh, so you probably wouldn't even beat theta on that, I don't think, unless you got like an 80 uh, delta put or higher, like 90. Um, so that's why we don't short uh, the upper end of uptrending uh, channeled stocks. Um, I, I do do that with sectors, though. So I will do that with sectors because sectors tend to rotate and it kind of works out with sectors. But a lot of stocks, especially strong ones, not a good idea to, to counter uh, trend trade them. Anyway, that's my uh, analysis. All right, let me see if anyone on the YouTube has uh, anything. Uh, Apple, all right, yep. We'll look at plug after that, Marv, yep. And then well, who was here the other night and said, you never knew me. Uh, she's, uh, he, she or he is not here tonight. Uh, but they wanted me to look at AFA yesterday, and I just didn't get a chance. Uh, but I did look at it afterwards, and um, it looked like something you just wanted to day trade and not hold. Uh, so Apple put in a nice little breakout day on the bottom end of its channel. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. Something like that. That's looking good to appreciate and uh, go past to about 148 maybe next time. So the top of this channel was 139. The top of this channel was 145. The top of that... Uh, next run was 145 so possibly you could expect six points 151 up here 151 perhaps somewhere around there uh yeah i wouldn't swing that one you were asking Matthias, uh to swing that all right and from the uh tick tock please tell me more uh which uh platforms is good uh, so the one that I'm using here is TDA Thinkorswim. Send me a message with your first last name and your email, and I'll send you an invite, and then we both get a bonus when you sign up. UWMC has a cup and handle. Somebody wants me to take a look at the cup and handle on UWMC. <laughs> no, I'm not really seeing a cup and handle on that. And this is a different time frame, you know. Maybe it's a different time frame than than the one I'm looking at. And that's just like a sloppy mess. Uh, yeah, I'd stay away from that. Uh, what else would you like me to take a look at? Somebody actually wants me to take a look at AMC. Like, there's actually something there to go after. <laughs> Warren Buffett and Jerry said laughing my fucking ass off, <laughs> you know. So uh, anyway, yeah, it's going way down. It's at seven and uh, it's going to go lower if you wanted to, <laughs> to know. <laughs> and uh, if it goes up a little bit and you're in it, uh, if it goes up a little bit and you're in it, take your profits, uh, uh, not profits, uh, cut your losses at that higher point. <laughs> 
Um, but uh, basically, uh, if you want to day trade AMC, that's about the only way to go right now. I wouldn't be touching these crazy maniacal stocks right now like that. And that brings me to GME, by the way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I haven't even seen this on the daily. Wow. It looks like the VIX. I mean, it just ran right back down to where it started from. Uh, we hit uh, 54 by the end of the day. And in after hours, it's at 49 49 and now i had a bet with my partner in, in, in the trading group that we're in that uh gme hits 23 dollars by the end of the month i said the end of the week okay and he was like no fucking way and we were talking about that when it was like at like 320 and uh i and i actually started to doubt myself so i said all right, end of the month. And he's like, you're on, you know? So, you know, if it goes to uh, $23 by the end of the month, I win, you know? And, uh, <laughs> oh my God, it, they, we said that at 320 and now it's at 49. So I think I'm, I made it, it's gonna hit 30 tomorrow. Not 30, the price, but it's gonna hit the 30s. It's gonna hit the 30s tomorrow. Oh, that's hilarious, Ryan. <laughs> today we had a cat in the uh in the office just come in some stray cat it literally just came in from outside and i held it up <laughs> and it was a uh i don't know i thought maybe it might be a friendly cat but it did not seem to be a friendly cat so ryan ryan uh knows uh, anyway i'll probably have to we'll play back the video but you know, a very funny moment ensued <laughs> garrett's like <laughs> So uh, uh, Jerry says, did the squeeze happen already on GME? Am I too late? <laughs> yeah, GME is the laughing stock of the stock market now. Uh, you know, like I've been saying all the way since maybe 400, uh, when uh, Wall Street's bets were saying, hold the line. I'm telling you, they're telling you to bag hold the line and you shouldn't do it. Keith wants me to take a look at Peloton. Peloton had earnings yesterday, was 146, ran up all day today to 157, beat earnings, and fell to 148. I'm still bullish on this, but waiting for confirmation. I played the run up today, sold it right before market closing, because you always say don't hold through earnings. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, he didn't actually say it three times, but he said it one time. Can you check Peloton for possible dip entry? <laughs> My thoughts were it's at the same, three times he says, it's at the same, oh, it's Kelly. I thought it was Keith at the same level as yesterday. And the pre-earnings was just wiped out by most of those people taking the profits. First of all, way to go, Kelly. Basically what you did is you chose to not subject your money, your capital to high uncertainty. It was certainly going up today. You saw it with your eyes and you were able to track it and control it. And that was nice and certain. But when it got to the end of the market, had you stayed in, you now were subjecting your capital to huge uncertainty. Way to go, Kelly, for recognizing that. That's a huge leap. And now tomorrow, you're asking me, should you get back in? So you're now struggling with another problem and issue, which is who gives a fuck? Like who, care, like, who cares about that stock anymore, you know? Like, you made your money. Go where it is tomorrow, you know what I mean? Let's find out tomorrow. Whichever way tomorrow goes, if it goes up, start getting in, motherfucker. <laughs> this is what Ryan was laughing about early, earlier. But uh, you see what I'm saying? So let's take a look at Peloton, though, anyway, since we're talking about it. So it's down to 144.50 in after hours. <laughs> Is there a stock that plays every day? I mean, you can play Apple every day. Um, it's kind of difficult. Um, AMD, you know, some of the some of those staples, Facebook, um, and you can use the strategy in my class on 924 uh, in the Masterclass archives and a couple of the later classes that build upon that strategy to learn how to play some basket of regular stocks that you can just play yeah uh so anyway yeah peloton ran up all day today people excited about it and then it just leveled back off to 144 right down there uh 
I really will have to see how it goes tomorrow. Uh, so <laughs> I just wouldn't recommend doing anything that uh, is a gamble. And just so when you see it, if it has the direction and the momentum and the breakouts, like we talked about, green over red candle high on the five minute or whatever you're trading on the two minute, whatever it be, uh, there you go. There's your trade. You know, and then until it can start to shape up into some new pattern that we can predict, then we can see it on the daily chart and have a better prognosis in the long term. But you did the right thing, Kelly. You know, you just got to now get over the fact of just liking that stock. It's over. <laughs> Next stock. All right. Sundial, Kyra. Sundial, I feel you, somebody said way up there kyra please so i can sleep long day <laughs> all right kyra <laughs> i know man i am tired too why is that not coming up it's not coming up for me did i spell it wrong k y r a i typed it in are you sure it was k y r a you typed it twice but i'm sorry but that's not coming up in my system he said, thank you, bro. So now he's going to go to sleep. <laughs> All right. That's pretty funny. All right. Sundial. Sundial, I believe, is in day trading territory. Uh, so that's not really. Oh, no, it's not, actually. Sundial is not in day trading territory. It has not fully become unhinged. We have candlesticks still next to each other and in formations, if you will. Uh, what happened today uh, when um, price broke over yesterday's high, uh, it turned green. That was momentum push, and it worked out. That was yesterday, and it worked out. Today, we had the pullback day, just like we had here, right? So if tomorrow opens over the high, you could potentially try and get in again and see if it pushes. Right now, I don't really think there's a swing trade on it. There's not any overnight prognosis. Uh, other than like what I said, for, uh, tomorrow the price breaks over the, the high. Um, that's a really nice um, momentum moment for it. Kyra is a Japanese stock. Oh, so sorry, bro. If you if you know what the uh, you know the lookup code is for that, hold on. If I type Kyra, it might come up. No, it might not be on my system. You know, Trading View might be able to show it, but it might be like on the. Um, another stock exchange that 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 TD Ameritrade doesn't supply. So sorry about that. TAK on a swing trade. We've got earnings next week and ARK has bought a lot of shares also. Thank you. That, by the way, is the perfect way to ask me to look at a stock. Tell me why we're looking at it. What's going on? What's the thesis? Are we, what are we doing? And then let's take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you, Earl the Pearl. Takeda Pharmaceutical Company, coming right up. Uh, Jay, you sent that message to me directly. Uh, you could switch that out to just the regular old everyone general chat area. Uh, that will be just fine by me. All right, there we go. Uh, all right, so it doesn't look too great. In general, it's in a somewhat downtrendy sideways formation. Um, but I understand there's earnings coming up, uh, you know, and I just don't uh, know if that will change any of this. Uh, that's what's been going on. And it had some, you know, outlier second and third standard deviation moves out of that channel, but it came back. Uh, right now, could be a good buy. It's right at the bottom of the channel. Okay. It's, it did that here and then moved all the way back up to the top of the channel. Um, but we're only talking about, you know, a move from like 17.2 to like 18.75. Uh, 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 for the for the range, I feel like, you know, you're barking up a tree that's not really gonna do as well if maybe you could hunt for something else. That's what I'm thinking. All right. But will it go up because Kathy Woods bought it, <laughs> Jerry won. But will it go up? He's like, dude, fuck, just tell us if it'll go up because Kathy Wood, Woods bought it. Yeah, I don't know. Probably. It seems like they always do. Is that what you wanted to hear? Is that what you wanted to hear? 
Uh, Clove, what are your thoughts on Clove? What the hell happened today? We were trading day trading a lot of stocks today. I saw something in the news behind me on Clove. What happened today on Clove? Somebody bought something about Clove, about something. I forget. All right, and, and it fell a lot. Okay. Um, I think we were looking at Clove the other day, and I said, this is one hell of a crazy-ass stock putting all kinds of uh, topping-like motion and extreme volatility. And then look what happened today. Shoop, fell down. Uh, and that is a, an unhinged fall. Uh, so now that's day tradable. I wouldn't hold that overnight for the life of me. Doge just went crazy with Elon's tweets. What's it at? It was at like 4.6 cents, right? What's it at now, Jay? I can't pull it up on my system. Uh, what else should we look at? OPTT, the highs. Yes, that's right. The um, Hindenburg or whatever report. OPTT. All right, OPTT. You know, like I, I think I said uh, yesterday, the best place to get in would have been when this green candle broke over this red candle high. Then it actually came back down, gave you even a better injury, and the next day you could have gotten it that cheap as well, around four point four five. And then yesterday, uh, that green candle broke over that red candle high, presenting another entry at that same point, 4.82. Came back, went way up, came back right there. You could have got it again at that for the third time in, in three days at that good entry point. And then today, you had another chance to get it at that entry point of 4.82. And it went up and came all the way back down and is now at 4.9. So you've had four days of chances to buy OPTT as uh, as it's breaking out from the bottom of this um, uh, trend that it's in, and uh, where it goes from here is potentially you know up and beyond seven point four, but I wouldn't count on it, okay? Uh, because it does seem that after following every huge spike, is a little bitty spike, huge spike, little bitty spike. Huge spike, little bitty spike. So that might be what's really going to happen. That's my chart analysis on it. Um, you know, start to see if you can see those things. You know, they're very helpful if you can start to see those patterns. <sighs> do you have any tips on anal analyzing stocks? I'm trying to get better. Um, but do you mean um, like from a fundamental investing point as far as like putting them and holding them for like years upon years? Or do you mean what I'm talking about? Swing trading, uh, trend trading, day trading, that'd be a whole nother level. Um, no, like day and swing trading. Yeah, man. I mean, I really think you probably should just take my course. It's only seven bucks. Um, let me type the link. It's market mastery. And I have uh, everything kind of just laid out in lesson form there. But if you do join our uh, VIP uh, group uh, as a paying member, uh, you will get access to all those classes. Uh, but what I've done is just for seven bucks, I've cut up all the best parts of that and put them into lesson form so that you can learn exactly what you want to learn, where you want to learn. It's not just some huge archive of classes that you have to sift through and dig through over an entire weekend. All right. So, uh, and, and Camille, yeah, I do. I think I saw your message earlier. Yeah. Private message me. Uh huh. I do offer private training. Uh, I've got a session uh, Sunday and um, I do sessions. I have a slot for a session about once per day, a one hour, hundred dollars. So just uh, message me. Uh, here's the uh, course link. It's a uh, market mastery with a Y dot teachable dot com. But I'm typing it now so you can just hang on and can click the link. All right, I've been neglecting the YouTube guys. Let's see what they want to look at. We do a pre-market game plan before the market opens. We day trade all day while the market's open. I take a break. And then we do these classes at night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And we do that every day, every day. We're making money in the morning. We're planning for it right before it. And we're reviewing everything now and learning everything we can, trying to pass on knowledge and information to each other however we can. Uh, so now, Marv, uh, you've probably been waiting a long time. 
Paul Holsey signed up. Take a look at MGI. It's my swing from 550. Okay, I'm going to look at that MGI and then I'm going to go to plug, Marv. So MGI and then plug. <laughs> Boy, I really mistyped that one. What is the uh, website link? Oh, you guys over on TikTok, it's so easy for you. Uh, all you got to do is just go to my bio, click the link. It takes you right to the uh, link tree. Uh, actually, right now it's auto-directing to our Discord. But right after this class, if you click that link, it's going to have a whole link tree with with all of my favorite books and uh, the course and a whole bunch of stuff. In fact, uh, right now I'll change the uh, link tree so that you can just see all those options. It looks like actually that's the way it is right now. No, 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 it's not. Okay, hold on. Why does it say it's not if it is? Anyway, it's marketmastery with a Y dot teachable dot com. Okay, now I'm disabling the link. So now, now you can go to the link in my bio on TikTok and you'll see a lot of cool things you can click on. A whole bunch of awesome stuff. Okay, we're looking at MGI. He bought it at 550, which was outstanding. And uh, now it's breaking out of this top here and it's at 9.3, but pulled back to 8.3. My advice to you is sell high. You've almost doubled your money. And okay, cool. Mom's here now too tonight. Looks like tuned into the YouTube. <laughs> There's mom. Hello, mom. It's her birthday today. Actually, it was yesterday. But anyway, happy birthday, Mom. <laughs> uh, so anyway, my advice to you on MGI, uh, uh, who was that? Uh, Michael is sell. And then wait for it to pull back some more if you love this stock and you want to stay in it longer. It'll pull back more. Wait for it to pull back more. Let me draw this for you. Wait for it to pull back more on the chart in price, you know, for a few weeks or whatever. And then get it again when it breaks out again. I mean, that's going to be the easiest way. You know, that way you're not losing money down here. And when you get in again up here, uh, you know, you can choose a different size if you want or options. Uh, all right. So plug. Oh, Mars has been asking for that for a while. <laughs> Ryan, I can't say my little joke now. Mom's watching. <laughs> Everybody says happy birthday, happy uh, like Valentine's Day, mom from Kelly. Happy birthday from Warren Buffett. Yes, we have Warren Buffett in the room. Anyway, that's the name of his indicator. He was asking me for stock advice, so it's probably obviously not war the Warren Buffett. Uh, yeah, K T R A. All right, well let's pull up plug. Here's plug. So plug is really topping out and putting in a triple top. I think we looked at it last night. So it became unhinged here. Um, that's only day tradable territory. And then it just, it's probably just sitting up there getting day traded around, kicked around like a little doll. Uh, and that's a triple top head and shoulders pattern. So maybe it's gonna come back to reality and join up with its natural rate of growth uh, coming up soon. And uh, we'll be, a great buy down in the high 40s soon. Yeah, we'll look at that, Jerry. Uh, save anything that's popped in after hours uh, for the end of our broadcast. Uh, because uh, that's when we're going to look at maybe what we might be going after tomorrow. All right. Uh, Dr. No Thumbs asks KTRA. And Vive and Neo. Let's just, uh, check out Neo, by the way. Like, uh, I'll do KTRA, but let's check out Neo right after plug. So I think I heard it went up today. Um, somebody was asking me about it, I believe. Let me see. No, it didn't. Okay. All right. So uh, Neo remains in a down, a small downtrend. Um, just kind of working its way back to, to the mean. All right, just imagine that's the natural growth rate right there. You know, if you were to draw a regress, standard regression line, it would be probably on the bottom end where the value is, uh, probably be about that. 
and then it's just trending down uh, to there. So that's going to be where it starts to become a good buy again at about 53. There you go, Neo. All right, uh, and then KTRA, somebody was asking, Dr. No Thumbs, which I don't know how they perform with no thumbs. All right, this particular penny stock has become unhinged since, you know, basically, well, today is the most unhinged day. So there's no holding on unhinged stocks, no overnights, no uh, advice can be given whether it's going to go up or going to go down at that point. All you can do is you should take your profits and then uh, day trade it. If you don't want to miss anything, that's why your rationale for why you want to hold overnight, then what you do is you trade it all day, pre-market, during the market, after hours, you day trade the thing. If you, and then there you've participated in hundred percent of the stock and you didn't get to uh, miss anything. So that's the way you can get over that. Do not hold unhinged stocks. Somebody said, how? Is that an actual stock? And I think somebody's asking. Parabolic play. Yeah, no, I'm not seeing that. Vive was at 9000 in 2016. It's now $3. What do you think? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> And it had a spike back there, didn't it? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, no, it doesn't look good. If you're still bag, if you're still bag holding, uh, forget it. <laughs> it's not going back to three thousand. That'd be a pipe dream. Uh, anyway, it does look like it wanted to gap fill, but usually when stocks after they gap fill after really negative news, uh, then they continue on on their journey which was going down. Yeah, tops was a millions years ago. Now it's $2. You know why? Because they just keep splitting it. That's just really unfair. F cell. Let's take a look at F cell. F cell continuing to do good. If you're holding, uh, it looks like keep holding and ride the uh, ADMA all the way up. That's that pink dotted line there. Just keep riding the ADMA up and then take your profits when it starts to uh, run into the ADMA. Uh, that'd be the best advice on that. Or when it puts in a very extended like exhaustion candle, a really long green candle, or it's, you know, just puts that in in that half day. And then when it comes back down, it turns red. But when it's way up, it's green. If it's way up above the 20 moving average, that's how you know it's time to sell. If it's abnormally above the 20 moving average. Normally this stock can get this far above the 20 moving average. That's like the measuring stick, you see? So it can do that again here. Here's the 20 moving average. And if you try and get that same distance, you know, it's still got some ways to go. So keep holding F cell uh, and do not enter mid risk. Do not enter mid uh, move, mid trade. It is mid trade right now. All right, only one stock per person. I'm seeing some of you put in more stocks. GWPH, Pot Pharma being bought by Jazz Pharma. Yeah, that was yesterday's news. Uh, and it went down, GWPH. Oh, okay, so, you know, it looks like it's a buyout. Um, and when that happens, uh, the amount that the other company is paying for the other company therefore dictates the value that all stockholders are going to get per share. Therefore, the stock is not worth more or less than whatever that value is. Therefore, I can see that the stock value is 214 per share. It looks like the buyout offer and it's gonna stay there. So it's not moving. GWPH is not moving from here. By the way, that question was from mom. <laughs> so it all comes back around sometimes. Sava. Oh man, somebody asked for Sava just now. Where was I, where did I see that? Yeah, I did see that. Uh, that's a totally uh, unhinged stock that's uh, day tradable only. And today uh, we had no entries. We watched it all day. The day before, however, we made a ton of money. That's the one we made a bunch of money on yesterday. Remember that guys? Sava. 
Uh, we took it from 62 all the way up to 90. And then after hours, some of our members got out in the 140. Or what wasn't it? One, wasn't it what, like 140? That was insane. Let me see. Let me take a look at the 10 minute. I'm pretty sure. Uh, it doesn't show that on the daily chart. Oh, yeah, there it is. 138. Yeah, way, way, way up there. So uh, we did really good on that yesterday. Um, and on that note, it's nine o'clock. So in my time, 10 o'clock Eastern. Uh, so now we're going to move into uh, what shall we play tomorrow? By the way, if the person that wanted me to take a look at AFA yesterday is in here, uh, sorry about missing you yesterday. Um, but uh, I did take a look at AFA after you asked me to. And it looked like uh, day tradable only, unhinged and not worth getting into. And in fact, today it went down. So there you go. Uh, all right. So uh, now uh, let's take a look at what uh, is looking like it's popped in after hours. Somebody had one. They mentioned it earlier. What did you want me to take a look at? CMCM. I'm going to go watch your YouTube replay. Have a good evening, PB. Good night. I remember the Buddha part, but I forget your first name, P Peter, Peter Buddha, Peter, B Peter, I think it's Parker, Peter Parker, Peter Parker Buddha. <laughs> All right, we got it. Spider-Man. Uh, we are looking at CMCM. Oh, yeah. But the issue here is that it looks like, you know, the big move was a couple days ago. So I'm a little concerned that, you know, we're late, we're late to the party. Uh, however, uh, we'll, we'll see, you know, Cheetah Mobile. So we'll see uh, tomorrow if this continues uh, in the morning and, uh, or if it starts off lower and then pushes up, we gotta see how it retraces those rallies. If they hold and it pushes, pushes further and breaks out, you know, how bullish is it? So we will find out. We will find out in the morning. Nice one. Keith, anything big? Pinterest says Ryan. Uh, pins, right? Yeah. Uh, all right. Pins, um, essentially at the 80-ish level, it opened and then fell and went back to about 78. Now, in after hours, jumped all the way to 88 uh pulled way back to 81 i imagine that was for the conference call and uh and then pushed again uh sound like it was a good conference call and ended up at about 30 percent retrace so that's still quite bullish that's two over one bullish that's 30 percent bearish 70 percent bullish that's two to one bullish so uh, tomorrow we'll see if that continues and is accompanied by any analyst upgrades with new price targets uh, like today, PayPal or one of those stocks had price targets uh, a good 50 points higher and um, didn't fully go through. But yeah. Okay. ATVI. Uh huh. That looks good. It had two pushes one and then only a slight pullback of maybe 30% um, from 93 all the way to 98. Activision. Whoops, sorry on uh, <laughs> TikTok, uh, Activision, Blizzard, nice, uh, doing super well, better than expected, uh, and then pushed again to 105, so that's from 93 to 105, um, about 12 points, um, just about, because it's 92 and a half, 104 and a half, and then uh, about a 35, 40% retrace, so we'll see in the morning if we get some analyst upgrades and further activity on that, That'll be a definite options mega dip by momentum trade tomorrow. Five minute candles. B I L L. Build Com Holdings. Uh, it's coming up. It's coming up. I think. Yep, there it is. Uh, not that big of a gainer, huh? Keith, what was the gain on that in after hours? 140 to 153. So that's like uh, 7%, I think. Ah, that's not a night. <laughs> Good night, Ryan. Uh, very funny. We're almost done here. I'll see you in the morning, Ryan. Uh, so 154, but it held bullish every time, even more bullish than uh, that last one we just looked at, Pinterest uh, or whatever that was. 
ATVI, Activision. Even more bullish than that. Only problem is low volume. So let's see if it picks up by morning and continues to push, put in some bullish uh, signals. I'll take a quick look at the uh, market chameleon, see if there's anything else uh, that's uh, really strong. Let's take a look. After hours trading report. And there we go. We got LAIX. Let's take a look at that. LAIX. That might be in play tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Went from basically 2 and around uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, some news came out and uh, closed around 2.56, pushed all the way to almost 5 and uh, put in uh, some very bullish uh, uh, supported retracements. So LAIX, that's looking really good for tomorrow. Tattoo. Oh, no, T2 Biosystems, T-T-O-O, T2, so it's T-T-O-O. Uh, they were at 2.4, got as high as 2.6 today, but in after hours shot up all the way to 4 and uh, pulled back to 3.38. So that's also definitely on the radar tomorrow. Grow is up 34% in after hours. It closed around 6, shot all the way up to almost 10, but look. Pulled way back, so that's not good. Why pull way back? Pulled way back all the way to 6.64. Gave back all of those gains. That's not strength. Uh, and then uh, pushed again, but couldn't even get halfway to where it went. So we'll see how it goes tomorrow on that, if that shows up on the radar again. CN. Uh, about a 50% retracement after going from 5 to 8.5. Uh, again, we'll see how that goes tomorrow, but that's that's all right. That's qualifying. Lizzie, we traded that uh, all day today. A couple breakouts on that one. Uh, here, here, and that was it. And in after hours, it went up a little bit more. Not really enough for my interest, for my taste. Okay, good. Yeah, and we looked at all the other good ones. Activision, Pinterest, Bill, KPTI. Let me take a look at KPTI. I'm not sure why we didn't qualify that one. Maybe uh, Keith looked at it. Uh, yeah, too much of a pullback in the after hours, about 75% pullback. Okay, everybody, that's our class tonight. And I hope you'll click through and join our group. Get a free trial, seven-day free trial to be day trading with us tomorrow. All right, I'll see you there. Have a good night, everybody. Go ahead and click through any of these links everywhere and uh, private message me or email me if you can find it, uh, if you want to ask me anything else. All right. Have a good night all.